In this video, we'll review some PETG filament and I'll give you some tips, tricks, pros and cons of PETG filament as well. So, 3D Creator kindly sent me a 200 gram roll of PETG to sample and review for you guys. Now I printed several objects, one of them was this very nice miniature tripod here that's going to come in very handy. Now I also printed a spare leg for the tripod to do a brake test. Now I've tried this several times and I can't break that with my bare hands. Very very strong. Obviously it's a good quality plastic or I would have been able to break it. Um, and the nature of how this was printed would mean that me trying to break it in this direction would have been the easiest direction to break it. So it really is a credit to 3D Creator for finding and sourcing some solid quality PETG filament here. So what are some of the pros and cons with PETG? Well, it is a semi-transparent plastic. Now you can see I've printed this blue icicle. It's a single layer shell with no infill. And you can see when it's placed behind a torch, it is semi-transparent and illuminates the icicle quite nicely. Now this, is, uh, this can be a pro or a con in the fact that if you want to illuminate some plastic, and sometimes you do in certain projects, that's great. I've used it on this Bluetooth speaker here for a power indicator light, and it's just got an LED there, and I've printed the diffuser with PETG. So that's a pro, but can be a con. It doesn't look as nice as a completely opaque plastic such as ABS or PLA in some prints. Sometimes you can see straight through the shell layer into the infill and you can see horizontal or vertical lines um, depending how you're looking at it where the infill meets the shell layer. Um, it's not really ugly but it just doesn't look as appealing in my opinion as ABS or PLA. Uh, another great pro with the PETG filament is its insane layer bonding strength. I'm not kidding. With this stuff, you can consider it as uh, injection molded plastic. It's solid in every direction, provide you using good quality filament, and provide you using the correct settings with your printer. It's, it's a very rigid, tough plastic. Another pro is it is very temperature resistant. According to research I've done online, it doesn't start to deform or warp or soften until over 100 degrees Celsius. So uh, it's fine for using on your 3D printer. You can see my 3D printer is just dripping in PETG products and I've had absolutely zero problems with any of the parts warping or disfiguring. Another big plus and one of the huge reasons I use PETG over other filaments is it has a very, very low warp factor. Um, I've printed an ABS many times and when you have a large flat object no matter what you do to prepare the bed uh, it will just warp right off the bed and it will throw all the dimensions out. PETG is not like that. Uh, it's very easy to get to stick to your print bed. I have an aluminium heater bed uh, and it's heated to 65 degrees Celsius and a quick coat of hairspray on the aluminium bed is all that's required to get it to stick very well and it's also very easy to come off once the heated bed is cooled back down to room temperature. Now one of the very small cons with PETG is its viscosity when melted. Even to its peak temperature it remains a very very viscous product. Now that means a couple things. One, prints don't look quite as clean compared to say PLA uh, which has a, a very low viscosity when melted. Um, and two, it means that you have a lot of nozzle pressure at your hot end, and that can sometimes transfer up the filament to the extruder gear, and the extruder gear can slip. Consequently, I ended up upgrading my printer to a Lucas V2 extruder and a E3D V6 hot end. Now, hardware-wise, uh, you're going to need a hot end which can handle at least 260 degrees Celsius preferably. Uh, the E3D V6 can go to 300 degrees right out of the box with no modifications. And it is a very worthwhile investment in my opinion. As far as the extruder body goes, 
I do recommend upgrading to a Lucas V2 extruder. Uh, I had a Greg's Wade extruder on here previously and uh, whether it was the revisional model of Greg's Wade extruder or the build quality of it, I'm not quite sure, but I did have problems with PTG filament slipping on the extruder gear occasionally. So your mileage might vary on that depending on your revision model and quality of build for your extruder body. Now getting back to the viscosity of PETG when melted, if you want good quality solid looking prints, you're going to have to accept that you can't print it as fast as ABS or PLA. Um, if you pr try and print it faster, you create more and more nozzle pressure the faster you print, and then that causes artifacts uh, in your final product. Now having said that, there is absolutely no reason at the right speeds PETG won't look absolutely amazing. As you can see, I've printed this model Tiger II tank. Uh, it did take a while, it's printed at a resolution of 100 microns and it turned out extremely nice uh, and I just used some uh, Tamiya model paint to paint the tank after. So that about wraps it up for PETG. If you have used PETG, let us know in the comments, did you love it, hate it, did you find it easy to work with or was it an absolute pain in the butt? Um, it'd be interesting to have other people comment with their experiences with it and also maybe their hardware they're using to print it. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.